Coming up on today's show, we have a chat with local singer-songwriter Courtney Dixon. 17-year-old Ellie Stevenson gives us a stunning live performance. We also have a chat with local percussionist Mark Barford. And we check out some more local fashion. But coming up first on today's show, one of our hosts, Carolyn, sits down with local singer-songwriter Courtney Dixon to chat a little bit about her work and how she got started. So I think one of the things when you kind of say, okay, I'm a performer, I'm a singer, a musician, one of the first things that comes to mind is, okay, you must be super confident. You must have this sort of inner confidence within yourself to promote yourself in the way that's necessary to do that. Is that true? And is that something that you've maybe always had or something that's kind of grown on you over time? Um, nah, it's all funny because I think... Uh, my dad's always said that I seem like a different person on stage than like what I do like in real life and I think it's because um, I think I, it's not that I'm not confident but I think it's something that you just have to like learn to have in order to be able to like do what you love yeah um, and I wouldn't say it was something that like just came like natural like promoting myself on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like um, is something that I think you've got to really like teach yourself how to do and like it's a whole different world now because it's like well I say that like I've been around for like hundreds of years um, <laughs> I've, I've always lived in the social media age I suppose um but it's kind of like given that if you want to be a if you want to write songs and sit in studios all day and then gig on a night time you've just got to have this like um side of you that's good at promoting yourself yeah and um, so I think it's just something that you learn to do over time and it's not necessarily that you're like super confident or anything it's just something that you feel like you've but I, have, I suppose it's kind of just having confidence in your own work, I suppose. Yeah, and just knowing that what you do and what you can provide is good and people, you know, do enjoy it. And I think it's that, isn't it? When, once you know that, na everything else comes quite naturally because you want to kind of spread what you can do to as many people as possible. That's it. And then that's kind of like you've got to make sure what you do do and what you are putting out, you've got to make sure you do love it. Because what I found is like... The times when I have like created something and been like, yeah, like you like it at the time and then it kind of becomes like a bit old or whatever. So I've had like lots of songs that I've never ended up putting out mm -hmm. because you just end up like losing the love for it a little bit or you've hung on to it for too long. Um, so you like don't want to promote it anymore. You don't think it's that good. And what I've realised is if you don't love it yourself and if you can't get behind it, you can't promote it. No one else will love it either. Yeah. So I think you've got to make sure that what you're doing is like, you love it yeah. more than anything. No, absolutely. Yes. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about um, how you got into this, like as a career, was it something that you always knew that you were gonna do? Um, and just how did it kind of come about? What were the steps that you had to go through to get where you are? Um, oh God, it's mad, because I suppose when I was younger, um, I loved singing and stuff like that like as a you know as a tiny little human there's like video things of me singing my favorite song was um oh that close your eyes give me your hand oh, by yeah. the bangles <laughs> it's my favorite song but i was terrible like you know how we get these kids that are like great singers at the age of five mm -hmm. i was horrific right <laughs> like ear piercing um but i just always loved like anything to do with like creativity so that like, I used to love dancing, I used to love singing, um, I, you know, I used to love, like drawing, writing poems, I, just, I was just always drawn to that side of things um, and I suppose like as I got older I think there was a point when I always kind of thought I would do, I would go into like something that was quite academic, mm -hmm. um, I was always quite good at school which is funny because I've got absolutely no common sense so everyone <laughs> thought I was really thick um, but I was quite good like in yeah. school so um, but I suppose the longer as I kind of went through school, I was just really wanted to create some music. And then um, it started back from when I was like 12 and I used to go down to the cave. I think you've interviewed Mac. Mm -hmm. um, he was a part of the cave. It was Mac and John at the time. And I used to pay 50 pence every Monday to go and work in the studio. I wish those were still studio rates now. 50 oh pence. Oh, God, I know. Imagine. <laughs> I know. Um, 50 pence. And I wrote and recorded like a... Uh, um, an electronic like EP um, with two guys called Martin and Daniel um, and that was so much fun and I think that was like the really like the start of me really getting into songwriting yeah and then um, from then um, I kind of just started performing more and then I wanted to like really get into learning guitar because I think I never felt very um, 
into the whole idea of like backing tracks and singing. Mm -hmm. I felt a bit like disconnected. I kind of wanted to accompany myself. Yeah. And so then I really got into playing guitar and then I suppose it kind of just all went hand in hand and I just started collaborating with people and people started helping us out and then I was doing cover gigs in pubs which like gives you like a little bit of confidence to like go out and perform and then I started putting bands together and then um, I got in touch with my man got put in touch with my manager uh, yeah my manager and then um, yeah it kind of just all went for the, it's kind of it's weird music so I suppose just one thing always leads to another and you meet yeah. someone who then puts you in touch with someone else who then gives you a gig and then at that gig you meet someone else and then yeah that's another really important point actually it is you know a lot is down to who you know as well yeah. um, and making those contacts networking how important has that been for you oh my god yeah just kind of having a good reputation and I think like make sure you turn up gigs on time make sure that you're nice to people and not yeah. like I don't think you can swear. Um, <laughs> swear away. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I suppose like networking is like so important. Mm. And like I've been at a few networking events, and I have to say I'm not very good. Some people are like such na natural networkers, <laughs> and are so good at like going and just being like, oh hi, I'm such and such. Yeah. I've never been very good at that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that is something that you do have to kind of work at. And yeah. Yeah. A massive thank you to Courtney for coming in for a chat and you can check out her music on all major streaming platforms. Coming up next on the show, we have a live performance filmed right here in the pit with an insanely talented singer. She's local to the area, she's only 17 years old. This is Ellie Stevenson. So yeah. I couldn't look you in the eye Just like an angel Your skin makes me cry You float like a feather
Whatever makes you happy Whatever you want You're so very special I wish I was special But I'm a creep the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. I don't belong here. Well, I think we can all agree what a voice, and I'm sure we'll be getting Elian for a chat very soon. But coming up next on the show, one of our hosts, Hazel, sits down and has a chat with local percussionist, Mark Barford. The sound of the drums, it's very primal, it's very, um, hits you in the body, and, and it's collective, and that's something, if, if we said, let's sing together, that would make people feel self-conscious, maybe. Yeah. Or if we were to learn to play violin together, it's going to sound like a cacophony for quite a long time yeah. until we get ourselves sorted out. So um, drumming has something immediate about it. Um, and individuals can shine and they can also hide. So if you're in a group, you can be part of something um, and have that shared experience. But if you want to progress and develop your skills, well, like any creative practice, you know, the sky's the limit. And that's really where the inspiration to go to West Africa came from, was I really need to see how this music is played by the people whose culture it is. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm not a West African man. I'm a British white man. And uh, I want to see how that music, where, where it comes from, um, how it's used, um, how, you know, yeah, just to see it done traditionally and very, very well. And, and, and it really lifted my level up every time I've worked with any, and I've worked with a lot of West African teachers in the UK. Um, and every time I'm just inspired and my level keeps going up and up and up and that's what I can share with my students. Fantastic. Now you mentioned students there. How has the current pandemic affected your group sessions? Well, it's pretty much decimated my work. Um, January last year I was running nine groups a week mm -hmm. and uh, two of those groups were adults with special needs um, mm -hmm. in centres um, in Sunderland and those centres closed and all the, other, all the other groups stopped. I work for an adult education charity called the WEA, the Workers' Education Association, and they decided quite early on that they would need to put all of their classes onto Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and did some training and I, I had to uh, build a studio and learn about the music technology um, oh, and then to be able to offer something online. So that's a really big learning curve for me because I didn't have those skills and I had to get some help and support from uh, the bunker in Sunderland where I now have my, my studio based. And, and I, run, I just run two groups a week at the moment, mm -hmm. which is really is lovely. Um, it's had a massive impact on my income, but we all really appreciate just to keep on drumming together yeah. and to have that connection. Yes, and hopefully be back in a big group together uh, soon because I'm sure a lot of people are missing their groups and things. African drumming, can you start at any age? Yeah, well, what I find is that I used to go to schools and work with reception classes and rhythm is part of all of us. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered by working with children and adults, is that children are fearless yeah. and they're playful. And They've got that, no like self-consciousness. Yeah. They're happy to just go on there. Yeah, and that helps me. 
yeah. to, to let go of my self-consciousness and to just play. Um, and as adults, often we build up resistance and fear around learning, mm -hmm. as particularly around anything new, mm -hmm. um, anything that feels a bit exposing or that we won't be very good at straight away. Yeah. And so it takes a little bit of courage to go, you know what, I've always fancied doing that, I'm going to have a go. So, definitely. Um, so it's a bit of a journey through uh, working with different children from the very playful yeah. to, uh, you know, sometimes when I work with 9, 10, 11 year olds, they learn faster than my adults. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's quite hard to hold on to them through the teenage years. Um, there's so many things to do. Mm -hmm. And there's, hmm, it seems to be... Um, immediate reward isn't coming or yeah. like when things when you have to work a bit harder at something to yeah. make the progress practice makes perfect pra that's yeah what it is. The, the, there's some resistance to that but then you know as young adults I get students back again and I work with a lot of uh, retired people and, oh, nice. and uh, middle-aged people and uh, I'm one of them now I suppose um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, people who go, oh, yeah, you know, the thing I've always wanted to do is to make music with other mm -hmm. people. And that's just pure pleasure Yeah. to uh, give somebody an experience that maybe they didn't think they'd ever have or they surprise themselves about <laughs> yeah. how much they've enjoyed it or what they've achieved. A massive thank you to Mark, and I'm sure you'll be seeing a little performance from him very soon. But last up on the show, in association with Delightful Tack, we give you some local fashion from Flora Rose. Hi, I'm Laura and my brand's Flora Rose. Um, so I sell a mixture of clothing, jewellery, accessories, little gifts. Um, my main collection are my adult and children reworked denim jackets um, and I also design my own clothing as well. Um, usually when it's not lockdown I sell at Newcastle Quayside Market on a Sunday and Durham Market on a Saturday. Um, I do small events like the Delightful Tack ones and the ones here at Carnival House. Um, I also do other local events, music festivals and I sell online as well. Next time on Sessions from the Pit. 